inside the cell right now let us talk about the most uh, important application of this real time pcr which is called the quantitative pcr now quantitative pcr as i have already told you that it deals with uh, the expression of the mrna so what we can do we make a sample by the dna extraction or rna extraction whatever by extracting dna or rna we get our sample then uh, if we get dna we can directly utilize it for the qpcr process and we analyze the data but if we utilizing the rna then we need to make complementary dna because we can only amplify dna segments utilizing pcr we have already talked it before so we need to make a reverse transcription of this rna to make the cdna and also we must treat it with rnas uh, to degrade the strands and the process of getting the cdna and then we can utilize that cdna for this quantitative pcr process but the amount of cdna that is produced must be corresponding and it will vary with the amount of it is proportional with the amount of rna which was present in the extract so by analyzing the data we can compare our results now before understanding the qpcr process we must understand a very very basic of uh, this uh, real time pcr product now the real time pcr is having three different uh, states or three different phases what are the phases uh, first phase is called the lean exponential phase now what do we mean by exponential phase at the very beginning of the reaction we are having plenty of uh, template plenty of primers and all these things inside our reaction mix so the reaction will start pretty pretty rapidly and it is giving us product exponentially after certain time when it reaches a particular uh, concentration of uh, our desired gene product in those conditions the gene product is continuously uh, getting increased but this phase is called the linear phase so this is the second phase or linear phase now the third phase is that in that condition when after certain times when at after 30 cycles remember we have discussed it earlier after almost 30 cycles of pcr process is done what happens there are limitations uh, because uh, the probes and primers and also the dna templates are start to be less and in those conditions the pcr process is start to halt so what we get a very very linearized value like that this stage is called the plateau stage so there are three different phases of a pcr process okay and you need to understand these three phases pretty importantly and another thing you must know is this value or ct value which is called cycle threshold method now what is that before that i must tell you uh, another important thing is that so during the exponential phase of pcr the amount of PCR product is proportional with the amount of starting template. This is a very very important assumption. During the exponential phase, the amount of PCR product is proportional to the amount of starting template. So the PCR product, if we get, uh, if we start with high amount of template, we end up with high amount of PCR product. That is pretty logical. We all know that. Now that was initially added. It is very very important. Therefore, the exponential phase of PCR is analyzed to quantitate the initial template concentration. Suppose we don't know the initial concentration of the mRNA we are dealing with, right? The initial concentration of mRNA we are dealing with. Uh, in this case, uh, in the PCR, we are not taking mRNA, we are taking cDNA, but we know that the cDNA concentration is exactly directly proportional to the concentration of mRNA inside the cell, right? So, we don't know the initial concentration. So after certain time period, if we calculate the value of the concentration of our end products, of our amplified products, it, it should be proportional with the starting product. So we can get back uh, to the starting product. And if we compare, suppose we are comparing three different type of samples. Say so here is the sample 1, sample 2 and sample 3. We don't know the initial concentration of these three mRNAs inside the cell, but after running this PCR process, what we get is that, uh, for example, say, not not this, say this one, sample one, sam uh, so this is, this is the sample two, this is sample three. Now we don't know the initial concentration of this mRNA, which is sample two, but what we know, we also run the PCR for sample one and sample three. The concentration, the initial concentration of which we know. Now what we get from it, we get the amplified product of it. Now, 
we get the amplified product of both of them 1 2 and c all of them and what we can conclude from that the amplified product of 1 from the amplified product of 1 we can look back the starting concentration which is known and again from the amplified product of c we can look back to the starting concentration which is also known and using these two as a standard measurement we can measure the starting concentration of unknown product 2 because the end concentration is known by us the end concentration of 1 2 and c all of them are known to us after uh, the amplification process and how we know uh, the end point or end concentration of the products utilizing several different probes utilizing the probes we have discussed about so this is the magic of quantitative PCR this is the magic of real-time PCR because we are measuring the concentration of the amplified product of our interest directly via the measurement of fluorescence so we can measure this all and among these three the concent the starting concentration is also known for 1 and C so we can utilize the starting concentration of 1 and C and also the end concentration of 1 and C to make a standard curve utilizing the standard graph we can plot the unknown starting concentration of the sample 2 of which we know the end concentration right so from this end concentration we can track back the starting concentration of this sample 2 so from this starting concentration we can tell that this mRNA is transcribed the expression of the mRNA can be identified so that's why it is called the quantitative PCR so we are quantitating we are quantitating uh, the amount of mRNA or we can amount of gene any kind of gene at the very initial stage right this is very very important but what is another important part so the initial template uh, so the commonly used method is called the cycle threshold me method for that now what we mean by this CT or cycle threshold method the CT value is a value uh, at which uh, what we can say uh, during the exponential phase after a certain time what happens the concentration of the product uh, is pretty higher so that we can designate that we can separate them out from the background noise so that is called the cycle threshold or CT it means the concentration of our desired sample fairly measurable fairly measurable from the background noise or can be separatable from the background noise now at the very beginning when we started the process as we can see all of these things are creating mess so there are a lot of background noise and the concentration that we are getting is pretty less so we cannot conclude by looking at here so after certain time when you can see this orange line which is called the threshold after certain period of time it start providing us when all of this process start to enter into the exponential phase it start providing us huge amount of fluorescence concentration and by looking at this fluorescence we can actually detect and we can tell that this uh, fluorescence signal is coming out which is much more higher from the background noise so we can actually detect it and this particular line uh, which is called the cycle threshold or above which we must so the cycle threshold is giving us or telling us the important insight that whatever we need to quantitate whatever measurements we need to take we must take it above the cycle threshold not below the cycle threshold because below the cycle threshold there are a lot of noise so we don't get appropriate result so to get appropriate result we must take the uh, uh, detection above the cycle threshold so whatever we getting we are getting in cycle threshold or above the cycle threshold we'll take that out and during the process we are measuring the fluorescence activity remember another very major difference between this uh, real-time PCR and conventional PCR is that we are measuring the product at the end point in case of conventional PCR but in case of real-time PCR we are measuring uh, the product or we are measuring the uh, signal which is coming out from the product after each cycle during the process when the process is getting progress right so that is the difference so it is giving us another important uh, insight that if we are quantitating it at the end it it can it can't give us a sufficient result because it, it will reach the stationary phase so we must 
carry our all the discussions and results in their exponential phase because this is the appropriate phase for knowing uh, the exact dynamics of this PCR and also in this exponential phase we can tell this fact that the amount of PCR product is proportional with the amount of starting template right so we can get these results and by looking at it we can tell what is the unknown concentration of product so that's why this particular graph is really important uh, x, uh, cycle number in x-axis and fluorescence in the y-axis or we can place time in the uh, x-axis because cycle number and time can be placed similarly there okay so you can see after 30 cycle play to uh, value is reached in this case so whatever type of detection we are going through the detection is from 15 cycle to 30 cycle this is a very very important part this is the very very important time where uh, the products are uh, exponentially increasing okay now the applications of real time pcr and also their advantages the advantages are this is very 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 sensitive and very very complicated also but very very sensitive uh, we can quantitate the gene sequence by comparing the pattern of known known sequences as we have uh, seen earlier and they are very very specific also so the measurement that we are getting it very very sensitive as well as very very specific these are the major advantages of a PCR so any kind of quantification if you are trying to run any uh, quantitative analysis the most important part is that you need to be very very specific and sensitive and both the things are fulfilled by the real-time PCR so it's a bonanza for us and the applications we can apply it for the detection of genomic DNA or viral DNA so as we can detect the genomic DNA or viral DNA it can be a very very valuable diagnostic tool for us second thing is that the gene expression can be measured so we can quantitate the gene expression pretty easily so after extraction of the total RNA and preparation of the cDNA from this RNA via the reverse transcriptase we can measure the gene expression of those RNAs as we have seen in the previous case how they measure the RNA content right and also uh, the process is uh, can be ex extended and the analysis is simple and can more easily be extended because all the process uh, that we have seen the graph analysis and everything is nowadays done by softwares so you just put comments and uh, sit onto the chair and look at the monitor screen and they will be telling you all right so in a sense in all that uh, real time PCR is really a bless to us so it's very good and I hope this video is helping you to understand real time PCR thank you